I just felt as a duty to myself in case my kids or any of these kids or one of my kids' friends, like I don't need to have a conversation with my, with my six and seven year old about how their friend died, yeah. you know, in their school. What is up you guys? Welcome back to the number one mental health and addiction podcast. The Hopeaholics. I am your girl, Natalie Eva Marie, and these are my boys. I'm Chad. Hi, I'm Shane. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and follow us on our socials and wherever you get your podcasts. Got a new episode dropping every Monday and Thursday. Please come check it out. This episode is brought to you by The Infinity Group. You guys, if you or a loved one is suffering, please call us today. The number is right here on the screen. We are here for you 24 7. Now, let's get into the episode. Yeah, welcome, Michael, Thank doctor. You. Appreciate it. Natalie, how are you doing? Amazing. It's Monday. Um, no, I need to make sure this like is Monday. all silent. It feels like I've been at work here for 12. It feels like it's Monday fucking 5 o'clock is what it feels like for me. I'm not going to lie. Does it? I'm all ready to go. I'm like bright and I'm, uh, I'm ready. Right. I'm I'll extra excited. Turn me, turn me around then. Yeah, Let's go. I'll turn you around. Let's go. Let's do it. Um, one, you made the drive. So thank you so much for coming in. Yeah. It's a, very me. exciting to have you kind of come on here, share your journey because it's not every day you get to meet somebody that went to Harvard. You, it's just, that's the truth. I just wanted to start off with that because I it's a I big feel, deal. I want to know. I want to know just a little bit of going that journey because it's not an easy one. And so a lot of people, you know, aspire to go to Harvard or you know the the big dogs. And Harvard is obviously one of the big dogs. Yeah. So how did that journey begin for you? Nice. Where were you born and raised? Yeah. So I mean, well, yeah, we could start there. So I was born and raised here, in Southern California. So I grew up in Long Beach, Lakewood area. Really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, product of uh, public schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I went to Lakewood High School. I played sports. I did well in academics, and I ended up injuring myself playing sports. I played football, and I injured my back. Yeah, you don't football. look like a football guy or yeah. anything. You, I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked. No. Nope. Yeah. Looking back on it, that kind of changed the, the you know the trajectory, trajectory of my life. Um, yeah, I was 16, ended up uh, herniated a couple mm. of discs in my back, was having just terrible pain, mm. basically from 16 to 26 when I finally had surgery, but we can get there. And my goal and my love was law enforcement. I wanted to be a, a police officer. Okay. And I wanted to be a pilot. Uh, wait, those are two very different things. So I lived wait. behind the sheriff's station. Just wait, they, he puts them together. It's yeah, it, it's crazy. Um, law enforcement, <laughs> and I wanted to be a pilot. Okay. Um, I wasn't planning on going to college. I wanted to just go to the, like the academy. Oh, sure. Right? And then maybe be a helicopter sure. pilot because I live right behind the sheriff's station. Oh, okay. Where the helicopters were flying it. So I'd seen that from 10 to, you know, 16 years old. Every time the helicopter mm, would come in, okay. I, I'd run out. <clears throat> End up hurting myself. There was no way I could go to the academy. I could barely, you know, oh, right. walk. I could barely run. You know, I would have just severe pain, pain down my leg. Um, wasn't ever planning to go to college, but I had always just kind of done good in school. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of my thing. I, You're one of those kids. It was just school right? was easy. Yeah, it was it, frustrating. I wouldn't me. say it was easy, but it was. He like it he came got naturally. Good grade. It came naturally. Yeah. It came naturally to me too. But I only wrote half the fucking test. <laughs> well, I Not, learned. You know I learned saying? early. Yeah, I yeah. learned early that it's like you just get all your points by just doing the homework. That's it. Smart. You know, True. people just Smart. don't do the homework, God. and that's why they lose their points. For and sure. then. Even if you ace the test, you, yeah. you screwed yourself. You still get a 50, the red circle. Right. So I ended up applying to UCLA, uh, UC Irvine, and Embry-Riddle, which is a fight school in Arizona. My dad told me this was at the time where the, the wars were going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the Iraq wars and things. Yeah. And he was like, look, all these military guys are going to come back from the war, and they're going to take all these jobs. So don't go to flight school. So I ended up going to UCLA for undergrad. <clears throat> I would... I wasn't really interested in medicine because that wasn't my thing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do law enforcement. But with my back injury, I was going to see doctors, chiropractors, possible going to have surgery, mm -hmm. physical therapy. So I was surrounded, you know, from 16 through 18, you know, with, with doctors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah, maybe I'll do medicine. That seems cool. So I ended up kind of doing some medical programs. Um, it's like, you know what? I'll be a pediatrician. I like kids. Sure. Let me be a pediatrician. Ended up applying to medical school i got accepted to harvard medical school it's one of those schools where it's like yeah you got an offer you can't say no so yeah, i ended up going definitely to don't <laughs> it's no light task to get into harvard right. so it's not like a well, eh. med school what's med school it's, it's huge harvard it's med school it's yeah. Yeah. it's so it's med school and then you get into harvard yes it was probably a lot easier to get into 
Harvard 20 something years ago than it is now. It just no. seems like college is, is really hard to get into now. Everything is just more sure. competitive. So when I was there, um, I was still having issues with my back. Um, it kind of kept me out of surgical specialties where I'd have to stand for six, seven hours like in a, oh, as right. an orthopedist surgeon. I finally got to my third year of school where I was in my psychiatry rotation and I could no longer walk for me to get to the bus to take it to the hospital. Damn. I would have to stop every like mm. five minutes Damn. and squat to relieve the pressure on right, my back. Right, and right, right. And I would be diaphoretic and I was just in pain. I finally had back surgery. And it was a blessing because it was Dr. Gustav White. He was a probably in his 70s at the time. Oh, wow. MD, yeah. PhD in spinal mechanics. I had my surgery done at Beth Israel Deaconess. Can't beat that place. Can't beat it. Can't beat it. I literally walked out of the hospital, didn't tell them. Jesus. Because I was a broke student. So when I had my back surgery, I was like, fine. I've never, like, Damn, in 10 you. years, Lucky. I'd never not had pain in my back. Wow. And I got up and I had no pain. Wow. And I walked from the hospital home <laughs> on day, I think day two. Jesus. Beth Israel and, and the dorms were... 10 minute walk yeah. still I mean, it, it's still. fresh out of back surgery I usually people are not there was no uber capable. back then it yeah. was a cab i was yeah. like i'm not spending 20 bucks on a sure. cab to go yeah yeah <laughs> I'm yeah, yeah. Gonna walk i'm like i have no pain i've been doing this for Jesus. 10 years so that kind of helped help my back issue um i ended up doing emergency medicine that was the time of er george clooney mm -hmm. everything was like really cool this mm -hmm. is like you know um it's sexy mm -hmm. it, it it was sexy at the yeah. time uh, and so I, I came back home and I like no longer had back pain. So I'm like, I can come back home to Southern California and do and emergency medicine. Well, I applied to Loma Linda. I had a good feeling I was going to get accepted to Loma Linda. I'd apply to USC, UCLA. And Loma Linda had a program with the sheriff's department. Okay. They were doing air rescue aviation. And I had some couple buddies um, from college. The rain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple buddies from college who had who were doing residency there. Well, so I was able to get my last six months uh, at Harvard do elective. So I came back home for those six months. I ended up going to Orange County Sheriff's Academy here in, wow. in Anaheim. Yeah. So I became a reserve deputy. My residency director was really cool. He was an army guy. Um, when he found out like I was going to go there and I was going to do the sheriff stuff as like a as an intern, mm -hmm. he's like, yeah. So he worked with me that first month of you know internship so I could go to the academy and mm. do internship and the academy together. Wow. So I've been with San Bernardino Sheriffs for oh since 06. So it was 18. No, wait, eight. so. No, wait, since 03. Yeah, because I graduated in 03, so since 03. So it's been 21 years I've been with the Sheriff's Department. Wait, so you're a sheriff? Yeah, I'm a reserve, yeah. Wait, what does that really mean then? So I can. Like, are you in a car? Are you in? They call them in. So we do the helicopters. So I'm in the oh air rescue gosh. helicopters. Oh my gosh! So are are they calling you for guys that are that they're looking for for on the run or? I've done. Um, High chase. We've done so everything was based out of the helicopter. So we would I would go in as a reserve. I'm supposed to give my two days a month. Okay. So I would show up to the hangar, get all our equipment yeah. ready. We would do. Um, Looking for lost hikers, rescues. Sure. I've done hoist rescues up in the mountains, Big Bear, Baldy, oh, everywhere. Oh, people like getting lost. Just can't lost, make it down the mountain. Injured. Or something. They can't get out. Wow. Um, we've done chases. Oh, I mean, everything. I was involved in the Big Bear shooting. Wow. Uh, with uh, that LA, I don't say his name, but the LAPD sure. officer that was running around yeah. shooting everybody. Yes. And so, you know, I was on the, I just so happened to be on the, on the rescue ship that day when everything popped off mm. in Big Bear and he shot, you know, Jeremiah McCain, who ended up dying. And yeah. Alex, who ended up surviving, and we've become good friends, you know, since. Wow. And we've done other pods, you know, oh, just sure. kind of based yeah. on his on his recovery. Sure. Um, so, yeah, so I basically went through emergency medicine, started doing, you know, the sheriff air rescue mm. stuff. Um, That's kind of crazy that you did that, like, simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, but it, it, it became all kind of, you know, full circle where sure. it was like, okay, well, my back doesn't hurt anymore. I can go to the sheriff's academy now. I can kind of do that law enforcement. And it worked out better if I would have just went to the sheriff's academy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think I would have been able to obviously do medical or I wouldn't have gone to med school. I would have just been, you know, a street deputy and maybe sure, sure. worked my way up. Sure. To, you know, do aviation or become a pilot with the sheriff's department. Um, so it kind of all came full circle, you know, full circle where you, 
where you think at 16 your life's over oh i can't yeah, become no. this now i gotta go to school and mm-hmm. weird but how it's just, like that but all. it just it worked out well i would probably never i wouldn't change it mm-hmm. for the world i think it was just kind of meant to be you got lucky with the back surgery for sure i did because it's a 50 50 50 50 yeah man it's crazy when i was 16 17 18 there's like 50 50 it's 50 50 you can only have surgery when it's to the point where sure. it's like you just you, you can't. can't and after yeah. 10 years sorry. it's okay um after 10 years it was i can't like i'm just done like i literally can't sleep i can't move function i'm, I'm at taking, all. Yeah. taking norco i'm doing all this yeah. stuff and it makes me sick to my stomach mm-hmm. and i'm yeah, I just couldn't do it no more. Um, but yeah, it was a blessing. It was a blessing that I was there. If I would have been at another hospital or some other surgeon on another day, totally. who the hell knows yeah. what would have happened. So, but yeah, so that worked out. And then just through my training, I just so happened to be at Loma Linda. They do a lot of event medicine. So I do the Baja 500, the thousand race, do medical Sick. stuff for that. NASCAR, I've done NASCAR oh, for 20 years dope. where I just get to work the track dog. That's awesome. And, yeah, so all of that stuff is has been a blast. So So then did you so you worked in the ER yep. then for how long? I've been an ER doc since oh three till today. I still Oh work. my goodness. So yeah. you still work Yeah, I in... still do emergency medicine. <gasps> yeah. I do it in LA. I've come to the point now I've got two young kids where I I I played a lot till I was forty. Yeah. So you know, at forty I kinda slowed down and I kinda set myself up financially, you know, so that yeah. when I did have Art. kids. Now I only have to work, you know, two shifts a week in the ER and I can do yeah. other stuff Good for you. Oh, on the amazing. side and then spend as much time as I can with my kids. That is outstanding. I mean, that's the, that's the play. Yeah. I, really I, I mean, I think so. It worked for me. I mean, yeah. I've seen other guys now that I was just at my buddy's house who've had kids when they were 20 something Oh God, he's and now they're all going to college, Yeah, you know, so they get to live their life a little more now, but now they're paying for college mm-hmm. and this and that. I'm like, I've already got my kids, you know, stuff funded. So hopefully yeah. in. 15 years or 14 years or however long it takes that all kind of God grows. Willing, yeah. God will. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see other than the market going to oh, I have hand basket this morning, but that's so fine. do you currently live in back in like hometown area or do you live in, where do you live? So I live in Claremont, okay. um, which is, you know, at the base of Mount Baldy, Yep. you know, it's on kind of the city on the, I guess the most east side of LA County itself. That's so funny because I think we were just talking this morning with, um, Catherine, our COO, about hiking Mount Baldy. It's like 8,000 feet. Or no, wait. It's, it's 8,000 at least. Right? Yeah, but there's always every year one or two people that will go up to uh, the point, especially in the wintertime where it's just all ice shoot, and they go up and they just slide. I mean, there's people that die up there oh, every fuck. year. Oh, my gosh, oh, yeah. really? Oh, every year. If you Google it, every year there's someone that goes missing. Which they find them six months later, frozen. Stop or, uh, it! Yeah, yeah, I'm not. But, going, I don't, I don't, I'm not a hiker. Yeah, if you're gonna hike it, hike it in the summertime. Yeah. Don't. Okay. Don't go up there. I'll in the make winter. sure I tell her. Yeah. Don't do it in the winter. What's time. been your torch? Um, like you know what I'm saying. I mean, you're 16. You're injured. Uh, you plan. You had to transition. Uh, you know what I'm saying. Was there someone special in your life? Was there someone? It seems like you were influenced by the uh, uh, helicopters. So I like, I mean, my parents were, mm-hmm. right? So my parents were immigrants. So yeah. they're from mi- where? From Middle East. They're yeah. Egyptian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they're Coptic Christians that basically left Egypt in a time where there was a lot of, yeah, uh, you know, persecution Christianity. of Christianity. Yeah. So they came here. My dad came first, worked. I mean, he he worked in a liquor store, slept in the storeroom of a, mm. of a liquor store because he couldn't afford oh, places to live with yeah. the rats and whatever else yeah. that were back there. You know, and finally got an apartment called for my mom to come they ended up getting married here then we were born you know my brother and I um older or younger uh he's two years younger he's a CHP officer but he just he just medically retired because of PTSD he was involved in a shooting up near Vegas oh wow yeah on the job and they (sighs) yeah they I won't go into it yeah of course yeah there's litigation but um yeah he ended up having to retire at 45 just mm-hmm. because of Jesus. kind of what they put him through yeah. mm-hmm. um, during the shooting. It was a good shoot. It was just they didn't get him the care he needed. No, to which get. is super important and why I feel like especially like our law enforcement and those guys, obviously in everything you're going to have your bad eggs, right? In every yeah. position or every job that you go to, it's just, it's just humans. You know, humans are the are the problem. Right. But then there's the good ones. And then you go through serious situations, whichever job that you're doing, whether it's firefighter, paramedic, uh, ER doctor to CHP, um, they're doing a lot of things that the, our military, another, another sector, but, uh, 
that the average civilian is not seeing on a day-to-day basis. So if they don't take the proper protocols to make sure that mind, body, and and soul are right, that ends up leading and trickling into not only their daily life, but their their life on the job. And then that is a problem right you know and that's why i feel like suicide rate is extremely high addiction is extremely high because people are going through a lot of things and don't know how to channel those types of emotions or, or those types of feelings because maybe their spouse girlfriend partner significant other friends family they wouldn't be able to relate because they don't they, they haven't been in that exact scenario right. so it is important for i feel like corporations to take that into consideration a lot more in the sense of not looking at it as a sign of weakness. It's more along the sign of like, regardless of, I guess, taking being preventative with it. So it's, it's this is what we do. This is like our implementation. Mm-hmm. And regardless if you think that you're fine, this is what our protocol is, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So that you can be the healthiest that you possibly can be, right. you know? Yeah, uh, 100%. So he got involved in a shooting he was there for many hours after his shift and was told to come back four hours later for his next shift and didn't go on a three-day leave or go see anybody for yeah, it's ridiculous. basically two years after. They, they, that's just, like, that's terrible. Yeah, they, and he didn't reach out to me until it was kind of too late. Well, of course, because that's what happens yeah. is that the when someone's actually at the point of reaching out, it's, it's, it's pretty fucking, it's, yeah. thank God they're reaching out, but it's at a very bad moment. A year and a half later. Yeah, and which is too late. And how much destruction was already causing within that year and a half, you know, a lot. He told me basically where he lived because he lived in Vegas and, you know, him and his partners would, you know, uh, drive to where their station was. He had to to pass two times a day when he was working the the shooting happened. Yeah. And regardless of of like whether it was like everything went well or if it didn't go well or, or certain things, your subconscious mind plays a role in driving past that place without you even knowing what is happening yeah you know so it's just little things like that i guess irritate me because um it's something that you You're hear fired up and passionate about this i like that well i just hear you hear these stories so much yeah. you know it's, it's, it's wrong it it's is wrong. Yeah. you can't treat these people that are giving of themselves it's I already agree. a stressful job and then when something happens, you just like, oh, we're short. Go work. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. be gone to, you know, go to hell. Like, just mm-hmm. go to work. And then it's the, and then it's it's another thing. Like, and then you wonder why we're short. It's because of situations and scenarios and stories like these is that it continuously hear the same thing. You know, we're really short in recruits for our military as well. Mm-hmm. But it's also because when the guys come back from you know boots on the ground for protecting our freedom to do something like what we're doing today Mm -hmm. they just get disposed of as if they didn't do anything and it's like to me that's wild and Mm -hmm. totally ass backwards so i'm like don't give me on a whole (laughs) nother tangent on that one but um getting back to you so um what do your parents think oh yeah they're proud I mean, I, I, they're proud. Yeah. You know, I've got two young kids and I get to see my mom when the kids come see me, mm-hmm. you know, when they stay with me and she helps out and, yeah. it's, and it's, it's a godsend. Yeah. I mean, my dad is obviously proud. He, they, they're separated and they, he lives in uh, Florida. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so he sends cards and talks to the kids. But yeah, no, I think they're very proud. Um, How was the divorce on you? How old were so you? I never got divorced. No, yeah. no, no. Your parents, you said. Oh, um, you know, that was probably something that could have happened they never got divorced so okay so they're still legal christians are legally married they don't get they don't get divorced Mm -hmm. they separated they'd always had a a, a turbulent relationship so we grew up kind of watching that to the point where even sometimes you're like well Mm -hmm. why don't you guys just get divorced sure 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 sure. (laughs) just just like like end it you know um but that's just kind of their faith yeah you know they're 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 different i like that i like i like they're true i like that i like uh, you know the person christian is real my uh business partner uh um Dr. Nuria Rabo mm-hmm. was also Iraqi Christian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ten percent are Christian, mm-hmm. and uh, they're persecuted. Yeah, so still to this day. What? Uh, how old were you when they moved into separate homes? Oh, uh, they. I was in college already. Okay. Yeah. So. so it wouldn't have like it didn't have as. No, I. We knew it was coming. Okay. They probably stayed together with us. Sure. You know, for you guys. With, for us, yeah. as, mm-hmm. you know, I went to college. My brother went off to college, and they kind of separated their own ways. Yeah. So. so you're not de- you're not pa- un- having to unpack anything. I, I, I think it's 
growing up in that, it's probably it's, affected me. Sure. Kinda, you know, sure. my, my relationships, yeah. mm -hmm. maybe why I didn't have kids until I was, you know, in my 40s. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to, you know. God, I never thought of that. Yeah, just but kinda. I don't think so. I think for a man, obviously I'm not one, so I can't speak for you guys, but I feel like you guys come into your own at an older age, not only from like a mental standpoint, but also where you feel a, a financial stability to maturity to then want to have kids. I mean, that's not for everybody, but Plus we I don't was, know. Uh, we, we was having fun, too. Yeah. We yeah. was having lots of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, because I was the same. But yeah. 40, I got married at 40, kids at 41. Yeah. Same, identical. So oh, I really? So you didn't have a child I, until 40? Uh, 41 was yeah. my daughter. I know his life. 42. I live, I, yeah. We lived the same life. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, wonderful. So, yeah, I just kind of waited. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't. Well, like, and also your job, I feel like, was very much... Um, when you're in the ER, I'm sure you're working crazy shifts. It's crazy shifts. It's stressful. I mean, I basically went from college for four years, medical school, residency. I mean, I didn't. You didn't stop. I didn't stop till exactly. I was 30, I think, 31. Mm -hmm. Started to make like real money yeah. finally. Right. And even the real money I made was going back to pay for college and totally. yeah. medical school. So it's like if I were to have kids, be working crazy hours, then stressful. having to pay for you know, kids' schools and things like that. It mm -hmm. would just been, it, w it would have been really stressful. Mm -hmm. But it all worked out. So, because you're in the ER right now, what have two you, days a week? But from the time that you started to where you are today, what have you seen the most, I guess, change and shift with people coming in? Um, or is it just it's very much? I think it's all the same. I think the ER has become more like primary care now. You know, so you do see your sick people, but you get that sprinkled in with a lot of primary care. People who have something that's not an emergency. Yeah. Why not go to the doctor, though? Why take up the space? Because our health care sucks. Because they can't. Jeez. Because you can't make an appointment. Mm -hmm. Because it it's, takes a month to no, see a primary care doctor. No, it's seriously, Jeez. it's so yeah. acidine yeah. where... Our health care system is not right. Mm -hmm. It's not. And it's even regardless if you have insurance or you don't, because um, I went through it just recently um, out in Texas with my husband where to get him seen, it was like, oh, it's going to be three and a half months. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I, we're thinking that he has like colon cancer or something. Mm -hmm. So we need to get like, can we, yep. you know what they said to us? They told me, and we, we pay a high premium insurance. All right. They say- um, sorry, ma'am, you know, the best thing that I can say to you is just take him into the ER and then we'll be able to, um, get him in a lot sooner. So that's cool. So now I'm stuck with an ER bill. So yeah. that way I can bypass and get him a sooner appointment because he just might so happen to have colon cancer. And obviously you want to address any type of cancer immediately. immediately. Right. So our, our healthcare system. Quit flexing. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't. Like this, and you flexed. No, I was actually moving my hair no, no, from behind no, my no, chair. No, you were flexing. Anyways, it's over. Don't worry about it. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, it's 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 broken. I mean, just primary care. It, it's impossible to get seen. Yeah. So everybody kind of goes the urgent care, telemedicine. Sometimes can be helpful. Hundred percent. I've had a private doctor, fifteen years since I've been in California. Yeah. I will not give up. It's cost me four hundred and fifty dollars a month for me and Marin. Yeah, we do too. And I have a private yeah, but that's yeah. dumb. Doctor. But that's that's but, concierge medicine. I mean, but that's, that's like kind that's. Of a newer but do you know how ridiculous that is? So not so we do too. We have a private doctor as well. Yeah. But we also pay yeah. our premium insurance, so it's like yes. Yeah. No, that's dumb. Same thing. Yeah. It's horrible. Well, we want to stand in line, be in a waiting room forever. Well, but that's, yeah, but that's like we live in America. We're yeah, supposed to have the best. We which we Canada's we, worse. Canada's worse. It's yeah, but I don't live in Canada. North America. I wasn't born in this Canada. Is North America. Canada's worse. That's yeah. why I live in America. That's yeah. the whole reason why, like, your parents came here. That's the reason why my parents came here right. is because it's supposed to be the best. Yeah, the best. And we're not the best. No, we're not. We need to, do, like, do better. Yeah. The system's I, broken. It's broken. It's really broken. Yeah. And I feel like it's severely gotten worse. And it's, I, and we were talking, uh, Shane and I earlier. Yeah. It was, I think, post COVID. For sure. Where, nurses yep the techs people that work in the hospitals who had to work through covid the docs who the kind stress. of work through covid the stress the yeah. for sure there's uh, undiagnosed ptsd i wouldn't say it's to the point of like law enforcement and things but there is but how about the people the, just don't want to work for sure they don't no, and work. also too the 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 nurses the doctors that have to relay the messaging 
that's coming from our government, how people can't see patients that are sick mm. or stuff like that's that's trauma too when right. they know that it's wrong. Right. You know, th there are so many like uh, friends of ours that were having to enforce certain regulations and they necessarily didn't believe in what their hospital was having to yeah. do. So right. that r alone weighs on people, yeah. especially big time in Venezuela right now, man. Civil war is coming. I mean, look at people there. <laughs> people are taking off the uniforms because you have protesters yeah. and the uh, uh, the policemen and mm -hmm. the, ser the civil servants are taking off their uniforms mm -hmm. and saying, yeah, we're with the people. Yeah, that's what you get when you have fake elections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's right. crazy. It's, it's, it is when the will of the people is basically just yeah. disregarded and yeah, and, and, and just it's very obvious, mm -hmm. you know. So I don't know the details, but I know enough yeah. to know that it was probably a fake election. Sure, yeah, for sure. Um, do you think that you got into medicine because of your back and because you ha you basically were so physically ill yourself? And then you were obviously, I'm sure you you seem like a smart guy. You got into Yale. Or Harvard, Harvard like, yeah. excuse me. Oh my God, is that like the rival? I know. Fuck. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Apologies. Um, that is the rival. It, right. <laughs> the Harvard Yale mm -hmm. game, yeah. Uh, just making sure you're listening yeah, to me. Listening. Um, and because you, I'm sure you were doing your own research on your back situation, is that, do you think that stems from why you were like, you know what, I'm just going to kind of go into this medical field? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and, uh, and the emergency medicine was the right fit for me. That's just kind of my ADHD personality where it's constant like, change, constant just, go. Yep, yeah. Just, here you go. Let's do it. You know, fix it. If I can't fix Next. it, well, at least, you know, yeah. get a, a, good enough little, to get you to admitted, get... you know, and get fixed on over the long term. There's things you just can't fix in, you know, a, a two hour visit in the emergency right, department. Right. Of course. It's um, basically created so that you, whoever's coming in is not going to die. Right. So yeah. you can kind of save them and, and, and get them, you know, kind of more prolonged care. Mm hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it, I would have probably never done medicine if I hadn't injured my back. I think I would have probably ended up just going to the academy and and done and, that route. Yeah, and I'd probably be you know a thirty year, probably getting retired, getting oh, ready yeah, to yeah, retire yeah, yeah. police officer. That's, but that's, you're way better off now. But way I think kind of the way that my life turned out, I think this is a lot better. I think it would have been oh, a, lot sure. stressful, you know, a lot less stressful than you know kind of what law enforcement has to go through now on a day to day basis. Why didn't you, after putting in so many hours and so many, so much time as an ER doctor, did you ever want to have like private practice or go that realm mm. later um, on? I've been asked many a times. Sure. Uh, it's just, I don't, I didn't want to be a clinic doc Monday through Friday, sure. eight to five, nine to five, getting calls so mm -hmm. and going to the hospital. I just, that's not, I, I can't, I want to show up to work. I don't want to pay. He's a pilot as well. He yeah. flies. Yeah. Yeah, he's a yeah. helicopter pilot. Yeah, he yeah. said, I know. He okay, works for the reserve. Sure. Well, just, well, so so I'm fixed wing, not helicopter. Fixed, okay, I, fixed I wanted to be a helicopter yeah. pilot. Um, but yeah, during COVID, just because, you know, they didn't want us flying as medical professionals with the full time law enforcement guys, they basically nixed us off the, you know, rescue mm -hmm. ship because we were exposed to people with COVID all the time. And those guys were. You know, those guys were just, the, I mean, and this is the height of COVID where it's like, that is you know, so the world, crazy. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Oh, uh, this is the welcome. To hey, the hey, Chanik, the four T's. How you doing, buddy? This is our CEO. He actually just flew in. His flight was canceled yeah. and then he had to fly in this morning. He, I know for a fact, but everything was moving and shaking. He was trying to get here by 11 o'clock yeah, yeah, no for worries. you. That's yeah, all good. Um, nice to meet you. But we were moving and everything got quickly. Step on it. Hey, 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 how you doing? Yeah, we stepped in the gas pedal this morning. He was early. Yeah. He was here at 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Oh, how long have you guys been going? Uh, 40 minutes, half yeah. an hour. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Still early. Still early. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Do well, keep going. Just no, let's turn it around. How was the trip? No, 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 no. I'm yeah. Joking. Jane. <laughs> don't, don't take it with me. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Um. That's crazy in yeah. itself. Like, yeah, it was it was a little disheartening. Or it's like I've been with you guys for you know yeah. seventeen years, and you know it was it was caused by one of our colleagues who basically had come in boasting how he just worked on a, a ship with full of COVID patients and oh just got off the plane and came in and said, "Hey, uh, I just got off the you know uh, the boat with <laughs> so then he you know COVID patients." So, so he, then everybody freaked out, right? So yeah. he instilled fear in everybody. Yeah. So no. they were like, you know, we're just gonna have to like we're, X A R medic. Yeah. Um, team yeah. over what I think was really nothing. 
Yeah, it's cold. COVID. It's what, it's a, yeah, I mean, you know COVID saying? is nothing now. I, there was a lot of fear and yeah. anxiety and things like that when we were. Of course. You know, in the midst of it. In the midst yeah. of it. Yeah. First six weeks. Yeah. But that's a whole. <laughs> a whole I other. mean, you know, I was out there. I was we, 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 when you work in healthcare, though, you're on the front line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, we put our lives on the line so other people mm-hmm. can get better. Right. Mm-hmm. And when COVID came. Like, I was the only guy at the grocery store. Yeah. Like my my employees didn't want to be the one to go pick up the food and the groceries yeah. for everybody. But I had I had addicts that needed to eat, right. and they were in treatment. Right. So I was gonna do whatever whatever I needed to do. It happened in medicine. I mean, all the specialties, the ophthalmologist, the totally. podiatrist. That was it. They were done working from home. Refuse to see patients. It definitely changed the trajectory of just like corporate America as well, Mm -hmm. because now, you know, a lot of people can work from home. Mm -hmm. It it showcases a lot of meetings can be taken over Zoom and you don't have to have the hustle and bustle of having an in-person meeting. Although I'm I think from an old school generation where if it makes sense to be meeting like I'm going to have a meeting in person if I'm like signing papers and it's that big of a s- serious meeting yeah. however if it's not let's take it over zoom right because i ain't got t- time to waste <laughs> i'm with you right you know yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah telemedicine yeah. now is 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 booming because of that of same course. thing yeah i mean whole new industry it, it's not really? a, for a lot of things it's not the best medicine but right. it's adequate mm-hmm. and most people would like the convenience of being able to do something over the phone versus spending you know three hours of their day looking for parking driving for sure you know but then i see lo- their doctor I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip it on you really quick okay. because, okay, telehealth is amazing. However, then you have someone like myself, right, who is in recovery. And so my telehealth, I'm like, cool, um, struggling with a little anxiety. Can you prescribe me some Xanax? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So I feel like now it's increased the addiction and addict and alcoholic rate through the roof because people are self-medicating themselves yeah. because they think that they are a doctor because they're doing their own little research and they just want to – relax yeah. because it's the world is stressful yeah. which is life that it's that's the patient satisfaction part of medicine where it's you know becomes transactional and not totally. real medicine totally you know? i mean there was there was a point when uh you know working in the er pain scales were the big thing right yeah and nobody oh. could leave the hospital with you know more than three out of ten sure. pain, and they would give us a norco prescription stamp you know have you know God forbid you had to write it out. Now it was just stamp the script. Damn. Stamp the script and, for, and, and for Norco. For, for Norco? For Norco. And I because would look at pain them, is a three out of ten? A three out of ten. Yeah. You know, and that's just kind of the society we live in now. I mean, I, I get 80-year-olds with hip fractures who don't want nothing more than Tylenol. Yeah. And I get 20-year-olds with an ankle sprain that want a script for Norco. Of course. And you look at them and go, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but I've got a lot of colleagues that will just write it like there's the patient satisfaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the survey at the end saying, you know, how satisfied were you with your care? Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. that's right. That's yeah. right. And there's a money tied to it, you know. So, oh, so totally. Yeah, you Big kiss, pharma. You got to kiss everybody's butt. Yep. You know, so even if you're doing the wrong thing, I just morally can't do it. So I've, I, good for you. My worst patient experiences or reviews or whatever, are just people I've just told them, no, I'm not doing it. Same, same with our industry. Like if I get, if I have a bad patient review, mm-hmm. it's because, you know, in this industry, we actually have to set boundaries yeah. with people who have zero. never, who have zero boundaries. Yeah. Uh, some of them have personality disorders. Yeah. Right. So you set a boundary with somebody with a, uh, a borderline with personality. Oh man, your review is going to be shitty. Yeah. Right. It's going to be horrible. Yeah. But if you're just doing the right thing, then you just that's just part of it, and you just take it. And and that's you know part of it is I I train I think if you're a if you're a drug and alcohol treatment center and you have all good reviews, yeah, you're doing something wrong. Oh, yeah. You're doing something wrong. Hundred percent. Because we are treating behavior, right. bad behavior, bad right. behavior. Yeah. You know, poor behavior. Yeah. Poor thinking. Yeah. And we're trying to we're trying to change it. Yeah. And acting too. Poor acting as well. Not just the, I mean, but you know I think I'm that's. A, I yeah. think it's really good, in the sense of good for you, uh, not falling into the the kind of the easy 
realm of not only getting pressure from hospital or getting pressure from colleagues or whatever because it is all tied into money right it's big pharma also Mm -hmm. we were just talking about it i mean my husband recently or within the last like year and a half went through surgery and um we were having the conversation with the guys because shane just recently had surgery as well and the amount of pain medicine that is just easily distributed Mm -hmm. where the common person who is not an addict or an alcoholic right um they're going to go ahead and receive that norco or receive those those pain medicine without realizing the severity of that pill and how easily it is for the body to then be hooked on it Mm -hmm. which then can lead down a really dark road that we've all seen hundreds if not thousands of times um where i feel i'm thankful for like podcasts like ours that we are able to have the conversations with people in the medical field saying how easily it is to get addicted to something like that because it you know i remember going to like some aa meetings out here in newport beach and some of the women that were in the meeting is because of a surgery Mm -hmm. that they were then prescribed a pain medicine from their doctor and then all of a sudden couldn't get off of it right. and then Not, we're wondering why they were going to different doctors yeah. to then get 90 more. percocets you can get addicted yeah 90 no, that's that's what i got for my my shoulder surgery 90 percocets this was in that's wild this was in 2008 maybe mm-hmm. so went and saw the same doctor for my meniscus surgery uh 15 i think 15 it's just because that's how he prescribes now right because in 2008, it's mine. Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah. Um, in 2008, there there were no mm-hmm. guidelines. Doctors just, they wrote the prescriptions mm-hmm. for the pain meds. Yeah. Then after the opiate epidemic, now, you know, good doctors are like, yeah. mm. mm-hmm. well, so I'm going to disagree with you there. There wasn't, when you say there was no um, guidelines, there were guidelines. It was brought to you by the pharmaceutical companies who says you yes. can't have yes. pain more than three out of 10, two out of 10. Yes. So they pushed that narrative and then they provided you the MS cotton, the sure. all the all the pain pills. Yes. And then what happened was the, opi- the opioid epidemic mm-hmm. flourished and people started to see it. And then it became now you've, that you've got them addicted to it. Now you've cut them from 90 to 15. And now people still need their high. And then that's how they go out to the streets and buy. And at first it was heroin, right? Of course. It ended up being heroin. Now it's fentanyl. Of course. Heroin's nothing compared to fentanyl. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't even fentanyl. I mean, um, heroin isn't even really on the streets. Like I don't, I don't, we, we have 120 patients come in new patients every single month. Mm -hmm. You know how many are addicted to heroin? Yeah, I mean, milligram per milligram, microgram per microgram. I mean, fentanyl is, what, 50 times stronger than heroin? Yeah. Yeah. And it's so easy to, to get now compared to heroin. <clears throat> and why, it's, why and it's, not as, it's not as scary looking, right. especially California heroin. It's the white powder. Yeah. It's That's not. no, in California, it's the black tar. Oh, you, yeah, the oh, fentanyl. fentanyl. Yeah, the fentanyl. The fentanyl. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You go, mean, black tar looks like. It looks scary. scary. Yeah, it looks like. And you have to do a little nasty. bit of work. Yeah. And it stinks. Yeah. Yeah. Burns. Yeah. You yeah. you done heroin before? Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Ah, Shane. Wow, Shane. I did too. Opening <laughs> up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought you no, knew. I, knew. I didn't. I just thought you did crack. Times. Hundreds. Hundreds. Hundreds of times. Well, in Canada, we had really good heroin. Was the uh, the brown powder? Yeah. Brown powdered heroin in in, in Canada, really good. Yeah. I never injected or anything, but snorted. Yeah. 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 With you being in the medical field and now having two young kids, how do you feel? with them being raised with kind of the fentanyl epidemic that's happening currently? Well, that's a good segue. So I ended up, um, because I do some executive protection work and all my guys carry Narcan with them. Okay. So I ended up getting a grant for the school um, and they're in a private school and there's a undergrad, uh, not undergrad, uh, was it pre-K through eighth and then they have another campus, okay. you know, high school. Yep. And I, th- I think it was about 225 doses on Nar- Narcan and went in. I uh, was their medical director so that we can, you know, dispense it to all the, the aides and all the staff. So they all carry their own Narcan. <laughs> God forbid if they ever have to sure. use it. But then, you know, you see these stories of these kids that are found in L.A. County in yeah. the schools, you know, yes. in, the in the bathroom and things like that. Mm-hmm. 
and you know with the way they are, they're shipping this crap here with this, this looks like skittles yep. and candies and whatever it's it's just a matter of time that one of those is going to get dumped in the school or whatever so w w i was able to do all the training for everybody so any teacher or staff that wanted narcan they've got the narcan and we're probably up for um you know dis dis uh, dispensing more probably in the next year or so because it's already been a year good for you so both both campuses and and i just felt as a duty to myself in case my kids or any of these kids or one of my kids friends like i don't need to have a conversation with my with my six and seven year old about how their friend died yeah you know in their school you know it's kind of selfish on my on my part but obviously but we're, we're doing the right thing yes. right um but i don't want to have that conversation yeah. with them you know so it was just something that was just meant to be and i mean i think it should probably be in all schools um, I think the cost should be a lot cheaper than it is. I think, you know, how much Narcan is is stupid. Um, shouldn't be that expensive. That's just another pharmaceutical just, you know, kind of see it. I feel like now, too. I yeah, because it, if, you get, if you get Narcan, uh, not nar uh, naloxone, which yes. is IV, it's dirt cheap when we give it IV in the hospital. But because they put it in this Afrin spray sure, bottle, sure, sure. it's 50 bucks. And it's like, it shouldn't be 50 bucks. It should be five bucks. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of, <laughs> I should, probably shouldn't talk smack since I'm getting it for free. <laughs> but still, I mean, but that's the reality of it. Like, why is it so expensive? Sure. I mean, someone's making a of course. boatload of money and it's just wrong. Mm hmm. But good for you. I think that's a, I mean, that's where it starts is somebody like yourself, especially because you are in the medical field, you, I'm sure, witness you know, people coming into the ER overdosing or withdrawing or whatever it yeah. may be. And then to take your expertise and then implement that into obviously because you say selfishly, but I don't think so, um, your child's school. So therefore the administration, the teachers, as well as the kids are aware. It's the conversation that needs to be had because I think that's kind of coming from maybe like our generation, that conversation isn't nearly as available or read readily available as we have now because of social media, we have podcasts, we have social media, so that conversation can now be, I guess, spoken about a lot more and consumed and digested before, you know, when we were growing up, I think it's like you had to like research or you hear it from a friend or right. you're not really having right. these like conversations, Close. especially with somebody like yourself that's in the medical field, you work the ER, um, and you're well versed in the medical field. So it's you're taking that and then implementing it into an act of service. Yeah. And I think that's super important and need to get it in these kids out uh, uh, social media algorithms. Yeah. The problem is is that if it's if it's TikTok, China it's has not going that. in there yeah. because right. China's the one shipping it over here. Oh, yeah. So they don't care. Yeah. Yeah, we need a tough. Could you imagine if, like every uh, like every tenth scroll on their on their swipe was something to do with Narcan and how dangerous fentanyl is? Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah. what they get to scroll through, unfortunately, and then what you hear is a bunch of like hip hop artists or or artists nowadays that are promoting the use of drugs. It wasn't like that in my. Uh, generation they were promote they were promoting not that it's any better yeah. but they were promoting the sales of drugs right right you know like uh snoop dogg and dr dre they right. and those they weren't like you know let's go out and get faded every night right. and if they were talking about faded they were talking about marijuana marijuana right. and um alcohol right. and i think the difference too is like that like a Snoop or a, a Dr. Dre, they're also rapping about their actual life. Yeah. Like what they've experienced <clears throat> where now it's more along the line. It's like fantasy where these kids are not, well, they're I not raised I in the streets. I think they are rapping about their real drug use. So many of them, they're oh, some getting of them, yes, freaking you're right. jacked you're right, up. Right, I mean, a lot right. of the, a lot of the artists are dying. Right. Yes. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. Snoop went to Long Beach Poly, our, one of our rival high schools. Yeah. And he was, I don't know, maybe three years ahead of me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, he lived that life. I mean, right. I, I think he's mentioned that he used to sell drugs for you, money. You, you mean, look really young oh, if you're three yeah. years younger than Snoop. Yeah, I'm, I'm 48. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm up there. He got that good skin. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. got that good skin. Yeah, he got that, that <laughs> Middle Eastern skin. Yeah, Middle Eastern skin. Yeah. So, that olive skin. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting times. Yeah, I it mean, is. Uh, it's politicians. We need politicians with some cojones that are going to actually, totally. you know, put you know these these 
these other countries uh, feet to the fire 100%. about doing this. We're supposed to be the baddest in the game. Show it. Well, make them scared. Not anymore. I want someone with some big ass balls and to go <laughs> handle business. Yep. Because when you were, when I was younger, if you had an American passport, you never wanted to fuck with an American. Yep. Now it's like you want to hide your American passport yep. because now they'll want to take you, kidnap you, yep. and hold you as a hostage yep. so that they can put blast it on social media because we ain't going to do anything about nope. it and we're not going to get you back. Well, we'll get you back. We'll get you back, so, but we'll pay. Well, we'll, we'll pay. We'll, we'll pay the release. price. The, not either billions of dollars or the price of what did they just? Oh, they yeah, just I freed know. like some yeah, like uh, seven yeah. or eight terrorists. Terrorists. Some journalists that probably did yeah. nothing wrong, but you know we don't have any. We don't like, have any political power anymore. Is there no way for our military to go in and bust these prison doors down and get our guys back? There that's, is for that's, sure, but it has to be war led. Now. Yeah. <laughs> if you, you know? go into Russia, China, yeah. you just start a World War III for sure. Nice. Um, it's just yeah, it's, a mess. Uh, yeah, it's a mess. None of this would have happened three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. I know. And, and oh, we have, a, we, <laughs> have, yeah. we, we have yeah. a we have we have an MD on our side. <laughs> yeah. We have, yeah. I mean, yeah. from LA. From LA, oh, what? Yeah. yeah. No, trust me, I'm not a Libby. <laughs> yeah. Good. It's yeah. it's rough, man. I, I somebody just said, uh, d uh, like DM'd me. He's like, he's like, oh, I I, I like the way you th think in California. He's like, oh, so what do you say? So. There are people that think like you in California. That's what the guy said. I was like, "Yeah, we're not all liberals here." Right. It's, the state's broken. Broken. Yeah. It's I know broken. it's a beautiful state broken. that has been run to the ground. But yeah. here's here's what's yeah. gonna happen. You know, because obviously uh, Gavin Newsom didn't get his turn this time. He is going to spend the next few years cleaning up the state. Well, you know why? Because because he can. It's well, not the Olympics hard. Are coming here. That's why. He'll yeah. clean it up. It'll be clean, looking good. And then he's gonna go. He's gonna go for his bid. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the game. This is just the. I mean, but you, you gotta <laughs> hope that people are smart enough to kind of see through the nonsense, They're right? They're not. Yeah, just do the right thing all the time. Not just you know when it's politically. Uh, not when people. They yeah. they do the right thing sometimes when people are when at, when the world's when they're on the world right. stage. When people are watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know it's sad. It is sad, but you know, on the positive, there's people that are doing good like yourself you know you're doing what you can in the sense of uh going into your kid's school distributing the narcan making sure that six seven year olds you know it's a sad time that we're in but it's the severity of the situation and that's where we're at mm -hmm. so it's like as i guess a dark cloud you can say but then you know there's gonna be little soldiers on the on the ground that are doing good and and putting forth whatever each individual can that's for good right and that's what you're doing yeah i just gotta do what i gotta do mm -hmm. i like michael it is what mm -hmm. it is he's yeah a good guy well thanks i yeah. appreciate it Shane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's no a, I think he's a it's real doctor did it, real you know how doctor. you know how you know when somebody's a real doctor oh. they have an md behind their name yeah well I could probably beg to differ with that. No, <laughs> no, I know a lot of people that have the MD and are not real doctors. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. I get you. What my my dad is a is a is an MD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a different breed these days. Yeah. What is what's? I feel you're a young man and you kind of have your career already set and done because I feel like you're in a sense of retirement as well because you're working two days a week so you have so much. So, yeah, I mean, more I, free I, time than they than you were when you were thirty. Yeah, so now I'm working with a lot of uh, military guys. Do, uh, I work with like PJs, the pararescue men, yeah. the force pararescue yep. men, and so because I I I found my way into executive protection because of my law enforcement, sure. my medical background. So Super I do a lot dope. of work with the Silicon Valley types, and we we've got a group of PJs who are working for a company who decided to start their own company. So there's a group of thirty of them. So we'll. Uh, embed ourselves into security teams and provide that medical coverage. So they're all soft medics, you yeah. know, so they've got special forces, but they also have that paramedic medical background. For sure. So now these guys will deploy, you know, to yachts and boat trips and they'll go to different countries and just kind of be with security teams for mm -hmm. some of these high net worth mm -hmm. individuals or yeah. even corporate corporate clients when they're when they're leaving the state or even when they're going to different states. That's awesome. So yeah, so it's been going on for a couple years now and I do my own work with some clients up north and be flying up north tomorrow meet with the client and what part so, i'm from the bay uh i'm flying to san, uh, san um 
San Francisco, no, Oakland. S- no, San Jose, and I'm trying to think okay, the, the city right right next to it. Um, what's the city right just west? It's literally five minutes away. I, From I, San Jose. I, yeah, it's the San Jose Airport. It's literally to the the like, west five minutes. So I, I don't want to say San Marino. It's I've never San, been. I can't. It's San Mateo. I, it could be San Mateo. Yeah, I don't want to say that were, it's a big company that okay. they're based right there. So nice. Yeah. So I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, go. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. No, go. it was just, I wasn't. Gonna, I wasn't yeah, trying yeah. to pinpoint it down, but it's um, it's in my calendar. So, <laughs> yeah. so let me ask. I'll you figure a it out when I land. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to be late. And, oh, you're good. Uh, you're, uh, you were in law enforcement. Yeah, still active. Still active. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. uh, uh, San Bernardino County Sheriffs. What? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So hell yeah. yeah. So I'm the one of the docs. <clears throat> uh, I'm one of the docs on the rescue ship prior to COVID, and since then I've moved over to Aero Squadron. Um, since '03. Yeah, since '03 I've been with the department. Well, awesome. You never yeah. ran into me there. What's that? I was gone in '03, so. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, we never you, met. You could have. You could have ran into me at the old. Uh, what was that place called? Uh, that little jail right there in uh, uh, West Valley. West, no, well, West Valley. That, no, the other one. The, the where they ah. at Central Station? No, 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 no. It's like up in the dirt. Oh, up in the high desert. No, the, the right before you go up to the high desert. I forget what that is. The city is. Called. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, over uh, at the academy. I yeah. Can't well, I did. I actually did a little jail time, well, and I, never I, I got jail, I, so. I got yeah. to work. In He's in the, the helicopter. Yeah. <clears throat> I got to work in the uh, the the police academy. Oh, okay. Um, for and yeah. I ran I ran into one of my <laughs> high school f- uh, friends acquaintances yeah. uh, in the jail. Or I was in jail. No, he no, was going was through the academy. No. <laughs> Chad? He's like, yeah. I walked out. I was like, Philip. He's like, Chad. I was like, well, it would have turned out this way, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it sounds like kind of from your history, and you know, we were talking. It just, I don't know, something good comes out of something bad. Oh yeah, I mean, always. Look what, look what you're doing now. Yeah, you know, helping. Yeah, thousands mm-hmm. of people. You know. Yeah, you know, uh, drug addiction was a crime. Uh, when I was young, mm-hmm. in the in the nineties, you yeah. get caught with a little di- little tiny oh, yeah. piece of methamphetamines, and guess what? You yeah. were going to jail. jail for a long time, and 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 you were going to be rehabilitated, right? And you know yeah. what, man? I wouldn't be sitting in this chair today if it wasn't for those laws. Mm. You know, I'd probably be dead or still out there actively using. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it was the nudge from the judge that that got me. Where saved I needed life. to go. Saved yeah. my life. Saved your life, man. You needed it. Yeah. You needed it. Everyone, sometimes people need a foot on the throat. Yeah. That's how When your built. choice starts to become you're going to state prison yeah. mm-hmm. or you have an opportunity to go to rehab, rehab sounds starts to sound a lot okay. better, yeah. especially when you're not a criminal, yeah. right. when you're literally a drug addict, and they're not doing that anymore. Well, I don't think there's enough facilities like you guys have to actually take people in and sure. then the funding to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, in today's market, man, uh, you, you know, with, 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 and you know, I'm not, I'm not always a fan of stuff, but there is a thing called the affordable care act and everybody, people coming out of jail, that's a, uh, qualifying event to get insurance right. and they mm-hmm. can get insurance yeah. for actually very cheap. Yeah. 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 And they can go to treatment. So 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 there are more opportunities today to go to treatment than there were in like let's say 1996 when I went. Okay. Um, but yeah, man. So you're up in the helicopters. I was. You were. Yeah, I was. Mm-hmm. And then I think you're gonna have to listen to the beginning yeah. of our podcast. <laughs> yeah, we no, I we drove we dove into it. It's pretty yeah. pretty sick. Yeah, kind of post COVID, and then I've got two young kids, and I've had a, uh, I've had a few incidents I'm where sure. uh, close incidents where i mean Scary. we've yeah i mean we've done a, a tail rotor strike coming in on landing Ugh. you know so that was uh, you just start to i think you lose yeah, your yeah, edge yeah, yeah, as yeah, you get yeah, a little yeah, older yeah. and you've got young ones you start to lose your edge a little bit not like when i was 30 years old it was like gun ho balls to the wall yeah, balls of the wall you go out do some rescues and then go meet out with yeah, your friends yeah, at yeah, night. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So sad. that yeah it's kind of sad i i feel you though because yeah. you know uh I no, I meant for me, not for him. I f- I'm I f- really there. Sorry, you're already there. I'm there, bro. Even getting on a plane, I have trouble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the fear sets in everywhere. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah. Fear creeps in the older you get. It's yeah. because you have the more the respons- airplane. Come it's on. more responsibility. Yeah, it it's yeah, that it's, you, it's like you now you have kids yeah, like yeah. there when you're wife girlfriend when you're single by yourself it's you <laughs> when i was doing my flight training when i was learning how to land i mean the thought that would come into my head don't crash don't kill yourself yeah that would be the thought in sure. my head instead of just kinda exactly like, you know come in yeah, <laughs> make sure you know make sure your pitch is correct make sure your speed's correct don't and die. make sure your center line and it's like don't, don't die. die. You got young kids at home. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, yeah it's, you, you, you start to lose your edge shift. a little bit. Yeah, oh. you do. Sh- and, and and it's, nothing wrong with that. No, it's it's self preserving. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're going in like a, a, you, a hot head, I mean, yeah. it's self preserving, right? So, I mean, that's good. Yeah. That's, that's why they say wisdom comes with age. Yeah, I, I, be, I became done with helicopters when Kobe Bryant uh, crashed because literally a couple months before that, I was on that same helicopter. Mm-hmm being flown from from here to Catalina. Same guy. Yeah. And I'm like, I remember him taking off in the fog from Catalina back. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't think anything of it until that happened. And until, then yeah. I'm like, you know yeah. what? That's that's the problem when you're kind of with, uh, you know, high profile people and you need to get them there. Yeah. You kind of all it's your you take the risk. You take yeah. the risk to get them there. Right. And it's probably happened many a times before with other people where sure. it worked out until mm-hmm. it doesn't. Yeah. And then you're like, eh. yeah. Yeah. Well, Michael, you're the bomb. Well, appreciate it. Thank you yeah. so much I for making it. the drive. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. coming out here. Thank really you for doing. Guy. Yeah. Really thank guy. you for doing yeah. what yeah. you do thank for you, man. on both fields, because both are a lot to handle and yeah. a lot to deal with on a daily. Um, what you guys see constantly is is pretty wild. So, yeah, thank you for I appreciate it. All thank of you guys that. for having me. Yeah, thank for you. sure. Thank you guys for being you're great awesome. hosts. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.